Brisbane best-selling author Nikki Pellegrino has just published her 10th novel, A Year at Hotel Gondola, and she joins us now to tell us all about it. It is great to have you here, Nikki. Nice to be here. Yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome. welcome. Um, your latest book, congratulations on this. I'm a chapter deep already, uh, really enjoying it. Tell us what it's about. So it's about a character called Cat Black who's been an adventurer all her life and she turns 50 and her mother says to her, well, you know, you've only got 20 good years now and Thanks, then you'll, you'll stop wanting to have adventures and you'll become a homebody. And she's completely horrified by this because she thinks, I'm not going to ever stop having adventures. I want my life to be more interesting. And she realises the one thing she's missed out on is love. So she <gasps> flings herself headlong into a romance with an Italian and agrees to spend a year in Venice with him helping run in his hotel and oh. so it's her story of what happens to her in that year none of it pans out the way she expects oh how does it end read the book and find <laughs> out i'm um, very romantic though that sounds brilliant doesn't it the perfect love story really with a little bit of a twist what's your connection with italy again i can't remember last time you were in here did you live there for a while my father's italian right yeah so he comes from the south though not venice he comes from near naples OK, cool. And you tend, most of your books are set in Italy, aren't they? It gives me a really good excuse to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> I love research, it. Research, very important exactly. research. Exactly. No, research right. is very important. I think I might write a book about Italy because I feel I need to research it as well, actually, <laughs> for a very long time. You probably do. Um, what I like about this book, too, is that you've, um, you've done a little bit of cross, uh, cross bookage. What do you call that exactly? So it's sort of a book within a book. So mm. Kat is in Venice and she's writing a book about her time there, which includes recipes. There's recipes in the book. So the book's the story is partly told through her words and partly sort of from an outsider's perspective. And you can tell she's not always 100% truthful. Yeah. You know, she curates her life a bit, it's like, like we all do. Yeah. It's not exactly truthful. Yeah. And also you've got characters from one of your other books in there as well. Yeah, so I had a, a book a couple of years back called One Summer in Venice, and there was a character in that called Coco, who's this fabulous old woman who's always wearing amazing clothes. And, you know, she takes lovers and she's amazing. And I didn't really mean for her to be in this book, but she just gate crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get rid of her. So, yeah, she's... She crops up here too. Yeah. Now, Nikki, you do a lot of writing, but you know, I've often wondered this with authors. How do you come up with the stories? Is it a case of, you know, talking to locals or having someone in your family experience things and tell you about it, or do you just lie back, shut your eyes and just imagine? I think ideas just sort of come to you in this... Uh, this book was a lot about ideas going through my head and thoughts about getting older and, you know, what it means and is life going to become more boring and can I still have adventures? And I think I, it took me quite a long time to work out I had got old. You know, all of a sudden, no, 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 all no. Of a sudden I started being invited to my friend's children's 21st. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, that's not right. <laughs> so and that really, this book is a lot of stuff that was just banging around in my head and then adding in Venice because it's such a great city. Mm. So Venice is really like a character in the book, I think. It is. And the food because I love to eat. So You make me feel like I'm there and I haven't been to Venice for many, many years. And I think I was very poor and I backpacked through it and all I had was like one gelato and a piece of pizza. <laughs> so the food is beautiful, the way you describe it. Obviously food is a passion for you. Yeah. Are you a good cook? I can cook. I don't think I'm, I wouldn't want to go on Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what I want. I want people to feel like they're in Italy because, you know, everybody's got stressful, stressful things in their lives and everybody just needs a bit of an escape. So to write a book that will just take you away, whisk you to Venice easily while you're in, within its pages. I think is is a lovely thing to do. That's my attempt, anyway. Well, no, and I, and you do it brilliantly. Trust me. Yeah, you know, and I guess that's what you want in a book, isn't it? You want the the sights, the smells, the yeah. feeling. You want that all to be, you know, brought to life when they're reading a paperback. I guess. Absolutely. I want people to feel like they're there. Yeah. Mm. Can oh. you ever envision things? Because when I often read books, I can see the movie or the miniseries from it. Do you ever see that with your books? Not really, but someone did ask me who I would like to star as Cat Black, and so I thought probably Julia Roberts, but mainly because I just want to get to hang out with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. That would be cool. No, well, it can easily happen, I'm I sure. I can see it, I can see it. Well, do you ever get writer's block? You know, you, you always hear writers get writer's block. Is that just a thing, or is it actually happening? I don't really believe in it, because I think you can okay. always write something. It just might not be very good. Right. <laughs> so sometimes you do get a bit stuck, but that's more thought block. I 
okay, cool. You not know, writing you, block. Yeah, and yeah. just trying to work out what's going to happen to your characters or where the story's going. So you can get a bit stuck, but I don't believe in writer's block. How does the whole process work for you? Because I know that different writers have different ways of doing things. Do you get up at a certain time and go for it, or do you sit in cafes? I mean, how does it work for you? And she Actually, flies to Italy here. <laughs> fly to Italy, <laughs> sit in a cafe in Venice. <laughs> I did write quite a lot of this book in my local cafe because this is my tenth novel. And I'd started to get a bit lonely. So You're just getting the free Wi-Fi, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> well, no, it's good to have no Wi-Fi. It's um. good to be completely deprived of the opportunity to go on social media and waste Ooh, time. Okay. And it's I nice to have mm. people around you and a bit of buzz because you can get a bit sick of your own company. So I actually did. But with me, I think it's just I do quite a bit of journalism as well. So mm. it's just a matter of fitting it in and just making sure you sit down and write and don't. It's so easy to think, well, I will write, but the ceiling, I probably should give it a clean. You know, right. always, <laughs> there's always a displacement <laughs> oh, yeah. activity. Mm. So you've just got to sit down and make yourself do it. And I'm not a big planner. You know, I haven't got the plot all set out. Okay. Often I'm just telling the story to myself as I'm writing. So... You, you, you mentioned you know, your journalistic work, and I've seen your name on, on a lot of journalistic pieces. So is this escapism for you, like it is for people that read it when you're writing, or is it work? I guess I do think of it as my job, but it's a really nice balance. Like okay, the journalism nice. is great as well, because it, it's what you do, talking to people, getting people's stories, but sometimes it's just nice to go and disappear into your own story. Oh, lovely. Mm. Yeah, nice. What about people that are watching that might think that they'd like to try writing? Do you have any tips for people that, that you know, any budding writers? Yes, read heaps. Read heaps of the kind of books that you want to write and write the kind of book you like to read. Don't think I'm going to write a thriller because that's what everyone's mm. into at the moment. That's really interesting because I was at my um, children's parent teachers the other night, heaps of them by the way, and they were saying the same thing. Make sure your child reads really widely. It's so important for their vocab and for everything. Yeah, that's the most important thing. That's the best way to learn. OK, before you go, uh, you're doing a book tour. I am. I'm going to be in Dunedin tomorrow and then Oxford and then the week after I am going to be going around the Lower North Island. Exciting. So I'm excited about that. So all the details will be on the Hachette New Zealand website. Brilliant. Good to know. Nice. Nikki, thank you so much. Nikki's latest book, A Year at Hotel Gondola, is available right now. And check out her website for all the book tour dates, as we just mentioned.